How many times have you come across people who say to you, I am yoga teacher. These people, and they are all over the place, define themselves based on what they do. Mm -hmm. I understand where they're coming from, I coming from, because for the longest time in the Western world, at least, we are what we do. In fact, a lot of philosophers will take things to the next level and say, to do is to be. In other words, the work is to have meaning. Okay, I understand that. I get, I get that perfectly. But there is a social thing that balance. Yes, if you think that your work give you meaning, that's all well and good. But you have to know the bright lines that exist between your personal life, your work life, and every other life that you live. Right? Believe it or not, people have many different lives. Me as a sample. <laughs> there is your relationship life. This involves your interaction with all their love with your loved ones there's your personal life and this involves how much time you put into exercise taking good care of yourself and managing your health there's also your financial life you probably don't need me to remind you of that goes on there and so on and so forth we have many different lives but the problem is when we allow work to define us, it is as if it is uh, the only life we live. Pretty soon, unless you are aware of it and you take action on it, it impacts what you think, what you say, what you do. Let me tell you, I know this is probably going to be depressing, but imagine seeing somebody in a funeral home lying there in their coffin during a public viewing. Imagine that person somehow, some way, was able to speak to people in the viewing. <laughs> I know this is kind of horrific and scary, but bear with me. Do you think that person will sit up and say to the people, yeah, I wish I had more time for work. I wish I took more my work more seriously. Of course not. You know what the person will probably say? He or she will probably say, I wish I watched more sunsets. I wish I had a love. I love you more often. I wish I stood up for my fears more often. Unfortunately, we often wait until the final hour or the final second to get a clue as to what truly matters in our life. This is really quite a sad. And unfortunately, when we allow work to basically creep into all the other life that we lead, as well as all other areas of our life, it becomes some of cancer. You know how cancer works, right? It turns other cells into itself. Cells no longer are differentiated and they live permanently. Their job is to just spread and they never die. And this is the most appropriate I don't know, but appropriate analogy to work because regardless of how many hours you put into it, regardless of how much focus, sacrifice, and willpower you aim at it, there will be never enough. It will just want more and more and more and more. And at the end of the day, what exactly do you have? Money? Well, money rots in value. Just look it up, inflation. Power? Well, you here today and go tomorrow. Fame? Don't 
even get me started on faith. <laughs> Focus on the things that matter. Keep things in balance, perspective. Sadly, once you develop this cancerous mental attitude towards work, it's really hard to stop. It's like trying to push back against a runway train. The good news, the good news, thankfully there is a built-in fail-safe mechanism locked in the minds of every single human being. This mechanism is 100 natural. You don't have to take any drugs, you don't have to ingest any chemicals, no. It is also 100% under your control. It is not hypnosis. You are not enjoying some sort of cold. Nobody is going to tell you what to do with your life. Instead, it's the biggest thing that you can do for yourself if you want peace of mind. Because your work has taken over your life. This is meditation. How? How you can learn to meditate? Well, I have it, yes, in my website. You can join the online studio inside of <laughs>